Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and I really want to discuss some information that I've received for NVIDIA. And this is not a typical NVIDIA leak discussing, I don't know, the specifications of the RTX 3080 Ti. Instead, it's something a little different. As I'm sure you're aware, for the PC desktop as well as laptops, x86 has been the dominant architecture for a good number of years now. x86 has gone under multiple improvements. For example, we've seen the uh, extension of x86-64, more processor cores, SMT, higher IPC, core clocks, and so on and so on. But essentially, the x86 architecture has remained in place. But there are also competing architectures. We've got ARM, which has been very successful, particularly recently for Apple. The M1 silicon for Macs is actually doing rather well. And despite the fact that some people are kind of memeing uh, M1, the power consumption and performance figures are extremely impressive. And really, it goes to show you what could potentially be a really big threat to both AMD and Intel from Macintosh in the future. I'll also spend just a moment to say that this is an article. So if you prefer the written word, you can, of course, find that linked in the description of this video. But NVIDIA have one major disadvantage to both Intel and uh, AMD when it comes to the PC desktop or laptop space for that matter. And that is that both of those companies have the ability to produce their own socks based on the x86 architecture. So for example, on the AMD side, Renoir laptops have been very, very, very well received. For multiple reasons, performance is pretty good thanks to the Zen 2 cores, power consumption is also pretty damn decent, and naturally this also means that in terms of architecture and what AMD could uh, produce in the future, there are tons of potentials. So what I'm about to say is based upon what I've received from a source that has contacted me in the past. Now this source was one of the uh, sources that told me a lot of the uh, early Ampere information, including the fact that NVIDIA were focused heavily on ray tracing performance, but I haven't heard anything from them in around a year. But I have also reached out to a couple of other sources and I'm fairly confident in what I'm about to report. There is kind of like a dirty secret um, from NVIDIA, although honestly, it's not exactly super well hidden or anything like that. The reason I say it in such a way is because NVIDIA themselves have largely confirmed this with uh, numerous uh, statements they've made, plus also the uh, support for NVIDIA GPUs on ARM-based servers. This was an update from NVIDIA late last year. Either way, NVIDIA are making a lot of inroads for servers for high-performance computing utilizing the ARM-based processors. And so what we actually have now um, is NVIDIA actually creating servers and an architecture around what is known to be the Zeus core. We don't know exactly a ton of details, but you can do a quick Google of Zeus and you can indeed see a couple of reports already on that. So that information isn't new. Um, in fact, uh, I think quite a few people in the tech industry have known that uh, in a, uh, NVIDIA, excuse me, are moving towards um, at least offering uh, ARM solutions for the server market. What is new, however, is what my source um, which I received information from yesterday. And again, I have done my best to verify this from two other people. Now I will say upfront that I would take this at the moment as a pinch of salt, a rumor, and um, consider it as that's interesting. Do not consider this confirmed, although I am fairly confident in it because one of the sources has been one of the more reliable ones for me in terms of the AMD information that I've received and leaked several times over. Anyway, so here's what I was told. In uh, NVIDIA's lab, there is an ARM-based SOC that NVIDIA are testing, and it is with an NVIDIA RTX-based GPU. Now that honestly isn't too surprising. In fact, given what NVIDIA have done with Tegra, that's kind of like, well, duh. After all, if we see what NVIDIA have done with the Nintendo Switch and the success of it, and Tegra also has numerous usages, 
outside of the Nintendo Switch, but it gets more interesting. I was told that on this sock, which is currently consuming about 50 watts of power, we actually have a COD game which is running. Now, I was told that it's not the desktop version of COD. It seems to be a version of COD which maybe is like for mobile or something like that, but allegedly the code has been changed rather significantly, and it's running at 4K 60 FPS with ray tracing and other technology enabled. Now, I was also told, and this is what really starts to get interesting, that the actual sock can run um, RTX on the CPU cores. Now, you may immediately dismiss this and say, well, that makes no sense. That's a load of rubbish. But you have to remember that the uh, Vulkan API, which has recently been updated for ray tracing support, it can literally run uh, RTX, uh, sorry, or ray tracing anyway, on CPU cores when there's spare processing power available. Now, whether this is a variant of that for the SOC, and it's basically shifting around work depending on how much usage a CPU core is getting and how much usage a GPU is getting, I'm uncertain. I'm just reporting here what I was told. However, performance at the moment is very impressive. And while there are bugs and tearing at the moment, even so, it's showing a great amount of promise. Continuing though, from what I can gather, NVIDIA seem to have plans to offer alternatives to x86 and reduce their reliance on x86 on gaming, productivity, and of course the server market. To be clear, I don't think that NVIDIA are going to stop producing GeForce graphics cards, which of course will run on like an Intel CPU, no. But I do believe that they will start to create their own solutions and it's not like the technology isn't there. Again, I've just discussed M1 from Macintosh, but if you think about it in a broader sense, just very recently, um, at least comparatively, Microsoft have released a slew of updates for Windows, and you've got like Windows for ARM, which can run uh, x86 code basically using um, emulation. Now, goodness knows what NVIDIA are doing on their chips. Uh, for ARM, because obviously they are currently in the middle of the ARM acquisition, and you can imagine what perhaps future speedups on the ARM architecture could maybe have for emulation. I don't really want to get into the business side of things, because that's way outside of the scope of this video, so I just want to focus on what I'm told here. In terms of laptops, though, there are a ton of potentials, like laptop solutions, um, other devices like Tegra getting back into the console market, virtual reality displays, or should I say headsets. There are so many different potentials with NVIDIA actually going this route. And the thing is, I actually don't blame them for doing that, assuming it's true. Because, well, Intel and AMD, as I said earlier, have a huge advantage. They can create their own bespoke socks. And yes, they you know, of course, can work with uh, NVIDIA GPUs and so on, but you can't blame NVIDIA for also wanting to create their own solution. And it would also be really interesting to see what this would bring to the laptop market. Now, I do assume that there will be uh, backwards compatibility, as that's how it was kind of explained to me by a second source, that there is uh, backwards compatibility, or should I say, compatibility with x86 code. It's being basically translated, but as of the time I'm recording this, I'm not able to uh, provide technical details as to how this works on this um, supposed sock, as I don't have those details to hand. So um, I would take this as an interesting rumor, if nothing else, and a potentially very interesting situation that NVIDIA could find itself in. Back in the day, um, Intel and AMD both had chipsets which were being produced by NVIDIA, like the Enforce chipset. And with the uh, Intel saga, it actually ended in litigation. Basically, <laughs> Intel and NVIDIA ended up in court. And yeah, that, that was um, a rather interesting time in technology as... Uh, both companies weren't exactly happy with one another, which is kind of how a lot of these uh, deals seem to go, it seems. 
So I'll be very interested to see how, if this is true, it actually affects the market. To be clear, I don't think this is going to come uh, onto store shelves tomorrow or anything like that. But you can imagine NVIDIA actually creating an ARM-based solution for laptops, which would be great in terms of power efficiency, I guess almost taking a leaf out of the M1 book, although presumably the cores themselves will be slightly different in terms of the CPU, despite the fact M1 is based on ARM. And naturally, of course, this would be uh, cuddled up nicely to an NVIDIA RTX-based GPU. It's very interesting, if nothing else, and uh, I look forward to seeing what, <laughs> what we see out of this, if it is true. I also want to mention a few rumours concerning the RTX 3060 Ti. We are waiting, of course, for this GPU to launch. Well, it may have already launched by the time you watch the video, who knows? But um, the card is looking to be very impressive. The rumour has it that it's going to cost $399 US dollars. And courtesy of videocards.com, there are several benchmarks which have leaked. The performance of this card is looking to be extremely impressive, with the results we have here about 10% slower than the RTX 3070. Now, bear in mind the price difference between the 3060 Ti and the 3070. We're looking, again, assuming 399 is accurate, we're looking $100 US dollars cheaper for the RTX 3060 Ti. That's actually significantly cheaper for the 3060 Ti. And I do suspect it's going to be very popular. I've also mentioned a couple of times now in videos that, to my knowledge, the 3060 Ti is going to have a really decent availability. How available it is, um, given all of the shortages in technology right now, well, it remains to be seen because the thing is the demand is just so damn high across the board, whether it's the high-end cards, the mid-range cards, consoles, CPUs, it doesn't matter. The demand is nuts. But I do imagine that there's a good chance that NVIDIA will have at least a pretty decent inventory of these GPUs. And if they do perform, as we are seeing here in terms of uh, the benchmarks, I mean, it Again, according to video cards' own numbers, it's actually outperforming an RTX uh, 2080 Super. Not by much, I'll grant you, and it will naturally depend upon the application that you're testing in. But to me, that is absolutely nuts. That's crazy levels of performance. And yeah, I do wish it was just slightly cheaper. Um, I think a perfect price, like that, it would just be incredible value. Like my mouth would drop and it would just be over. I'd just be like, really? <laughs> Would be something like 349. Um, so we are still seeing a card which for a 3060 class GPU is kind of expensive, but I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to look at it as just what's available on the market and just looking at it like that rather than caring about necessarily the names themselves, which I know some people don't like it when you do that, but I'm trying to be more in that line because the custom uh, RX 6000 series cards have been way more expensive than perhaps we expected. It's looking like, honestly, the reference cards might be the way to go with AMD. And also, I didn't want to tackle this in its own video, so I'm just going to throw it in here as like a bonus. With the custom RX 6000 cards, there has been some reports that the numbers are higher than Ampere, and I'm... 99.9% .9 certain that the launch stock is not anywhere close to what Ampere had for launch. Um, the custom parts were very limited in quantity. I was asked to not give numbers, although I do have them, and believe me, they are not good. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to give numbers because I was asked not to specifically, but they are really low. Like, when I say low, I mean low, low really really low and um, I know that it's going to um, ramp up over the next couple of weeks I'm 100% confident that by very early next year the RX 6000 series are going to be I wouldn't say common but they're going to be pretty easy to get hold of I do wish AMD had held off on the uh, custom card launches maybe a little bit longer but it is what it is we can't do anything about it you know we've got what we've got um, I hope that the 6700 series 
isn't quite like this. I'm hearing that the numbers for the 6700 series, like so the 6700 and 6700 XT are better in terms of availability, but those are not going to launch until next year. It's looking like it's going to be early next year. I'm hearing January, February. It was even perhaps going to be a bit later than that, but to my knowledge, AMD did their best to bring the timetable up a bit because of the competition from the RTX 3060 Ti. Um, and I believe that the 3080 Ti launches kind of early next year as well. So uh, the holidays, Christmas is like sa is being sandwiched with so many product launches. It's going to be absolutely nuts. And um, then we have uh, in March, we have, of course, Rocket Lake, which again, I don't think it's necessarily going to beat AMD, but I think for gaming anyway, it's going to be at the very least competitive with AMD. With that said though, I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. The normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.